It took only three weeks for the Ottawa Renegades to win the first game in franchise history. In the process, they created a bitter rivalry with the highly regarded Blue Bombers. Tonight in Winnipeg, the rematch, six days after the feud began. Yeah, the trash talking is now over. Time to see which team will walk it like they talk it. It's time to go to war. And we've got a perfect night for it, 25 degrees. With a view of the Red River down near the Forks, the wind north at nine, just enough to keep the mosquitoes at bay. Coach Joe Popow has 24 years of experience in the CFL. He started coaching 10 years ago in BC. It's hard to imagine that there was ever a bigger regular season win than the one the Renegades had last week versus Winnipeg. Dave Ritchie begins his ninth season as a head coach, his fourth in charge of the Blue Bombers. He did an amazing job last year, including 12 wins in a row and a 14-4 and record, best in the CFL. Ready to begin. The Bombers have a little something to atone for. Last Thursday night, Troy Westwood was involved in that, missed his two field goal attempts. He's ready to kick it off, and Donnie Ashley, the speedster from Ottawa, ready to return. No question, the pressure on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in this one. Both teams doing a lot of talking during the week, but Winnipeg really is under pressure to back it up. Bombers won the toss and deferred until the second half. So Ottawa gets the opportunity of first possession. Westwood hammers it down to about the 10. This is Donnie Ashley. Some great returns as an Eskimo. Not bad to get up to the 35-yard line there. 19 on the return. Quarterback Dan Crowley has given the Renegades a chance to be in all three games in their inaugural season. Last time he got his first win, and it's a pretty nice start for this Ottawa team. Oh, he's played very, very well and really protected the football with just... An interception. He's got six touchdown passes. He's doing the little things to put his team in position to win, like you mentioned, every single game so far this year and winning one of them. Jimmy Oliver, Denny Montana, the wide receivers split to opposite sides of the field. It's Ashley sliding out of the backfield. Well read by the Bombers. And the gain is limited to about three. Dan Crowley has four solid receivers. Oliver Brown, Cummings, and Montana, who's quickly becoming the go-to guy, running back Darren Davis, needs more yards. And up front, Dittman St. Germain. And they will anchor the line. And that line has just allowed two sacks. So there's Darren Davis, and he didn't have huge yardage last week. From the shotgun, Crowley finds Ashley again. And he'll turn this into a first down. Defensively, it's an awesome front seven for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, led by Doug Brown, David Benefield up front. Benefield has three sacks already this season. In the secondary, Mustafa Muhammad has one interception along with Tom Europe and two for the corner, Marvin Coleman. David Benefield off to a great start, back with his old dad, Dave Ritchie. They've been together for a long time. Three years in Canadian football. Of course, not his real dad. It's just an expression. An adopted son of sorts. Exactly. Here's Crowley. Got away from the pressure. Markers are down. On the far side, Aubrey Cummings was the intended target, but Crowley was just trying to unload it. It's interesting talking to both teams regarding the trash talking coming into this game. And, and, and both teams are saying, you know, that that's part of the game in a lot of ways. It, it started early and often in last week's Too many contest. men, Winnipeg, first down repeat. Early error for the Blue Bombers. But when you look at it coming into this week, the pressure is on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I say that because, you know, they don't even believe they lost. They can't believe they lost. Milt Stiegel said, you know, they're going to go, okay, now we'll just go 17-1. and one. Yeah, I heard that <laughs> comment, too. They believe they beat themselves, and we talked about the turnovers. But that's, you know, and, and if you talk to the Ottawa side of it, they say, you know, that's disrespectful. We beat a very good football team, and why would they be disrespectful and say that they gave us the game? So, you know the tempers are running high already to get ready in this one. Here are the Renegades with the first down. Out across midfield at the Bomber, 54. Darren Davis, first carry of the game, and ran into Brian Clark. 
Just 17 yards on nine carries for Darren Davis last week. Yeah, the team only had 19 yards rushing. And when you look at what Darren Davis did a year ago when he had 1,200, remember he missed the first two, was on the practice roster with Saskatchewan. So that's not even a full season. 5.7 yard average. And it wasn't because Ottawa didn't try to run the football. They're up against a very good front seven. A gain of seven, second and three. And Davis won't get to it this time. Lamar McGregs, 36, was in the middle of things down there. You know, and what they may try and do a little bit differently this week, and you always have to make small adjustments, even if you're playing the same team. Well, in fact, especially if you're playing the same team. And rather than have a lot of cutback running against this front seven, Joe Pau Pau wants to just hit it right on him. Just go right at the point of attack and see if they can create a scene. Third and one, and the Renegades are going for it. Pitch to Davis deep, and he'll have the first down to about the 42. Well, see, and that, and that is a decision by Joe Pow Pow that plays right into the heart of the Winnipeg football team because their front seven is their heart, and he says, you know what, third and one, we're just going to go ahead and go for it just to set the table early in this one. Renegades. At the bomber, 42. Davis again, nice cut. Flags everywhere. Well, and you've got to know that the officials in this game have been listening to some of the trash talking, probably thinking we got to stop things early and control this game earlier. It could get out of hand. Holding, Ottawa number four. First down repeated. That's the slot back, Eddie Brown. So I would imagine that we'll see some quick whistles, especially if it's some contact after the whistle. Or I should say quick flags. Quick flags, yes. Neither coach was particularly impressed with the play of certain members of the other team last week. First and 20, Crowley looking deep. Far side, and the coverage by Raphael Ball on Jimmy Oliver was too tight. Well, it was perfect because Jimmy Oliver was trying to run an out and then up down the sideline. It's called a wheel route or an out, an out and up. And, and what happened was Raphael Ball jammed him when he went to turn up. You see right there on the left of your screen, number 27, see that contact? Just enough to slow down Jimmy Oliver when he turned to go deep and he couldn't run under that football. So this will be second and 20, Ottawa. Three receivers to the near side. And this is Davis. Slowed by Clark. Also in there was Lamar McGriggs, number 36. We saw Davis's average at 5.7 last year with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. This year so far it's 4.2, but again, you have to add in that game last week where he just had 17 yards. That hurts the average a little bit. It certainly does. The Bomber defense solid against the run last week, without question. Because Mark Nora had only seven rushes for 21 yards. Coleman is deep. Back to the five, dives to the 10, and that's about it for Marvin Coleman. 41-yard punts, no score so far. It's Wendy's CFL Live from Winnipeg. Kahari Jones set to lead the Blue Bombers. That's not a breathe right he's wearing across the bridge of his nose. No, that's, that's just a Band-Aid, because that's why it was a physical game last week, and John Grace, linebacker for the Ottawa Renegades got him a little late, something that Coach Dave Ritchie thought was a little cheap. A little blood seeping through there. You don't imagine they added a the little color there. He <laughs> wouldn't have healed in six days. I don't think they go that far. On first down, Blue Bombers. Pressure is on. Kahari Jones, and he had to unload in a hurry. Jones with a very talented offense, and you'll notice... Bruce and Stiegel, the key guys among the receivers. Roberts and Sellers will run the ball for Winnipeg. 
Up front, Brett McNeil moves to center because of injuries on the offensive line. Well, it's going to be a nice matchup. Milt Stiegel either against Ralph Staten or Gerald Vaughn throughout this game. Two physical halfbacks for Ottawa against one of the best in the league. In fact, number one receiver in the CFL after three weeks. Second and ten. Kahari Jones. Milt Stiegel. Defensively in the front seven, Dave Thomas has emerged as a leader and a playmaker for the Renegades at the middle linebacker position. And Michael Barreau is off to a great start. He has two sacks in the secondary. There's the two big halfbacks, Ralph Staten and Gerald Vaughn. They'll be up against Milt Stiegel tonight. Starting lineups are brought to you by Midas C. Midas for all your car care needs. And there is the wanted man if you're a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, John Grace. He's got a target on his chest right now, I'm sure. Stiegel picked up 15. This is Charles Roberts taking one, sliding out of the backfield. Gain of a couple there. And I mentioned Dave Thomas, the middle linebacker. You see how quickly he got out there to try and turn Charles Roberts to the inside. He's a big, huge middle linebacker at about 250 pounds. But what they love about him is he runs about a 4-5. And she's 58, takes a block there, but he gets out to turn Charles Roberts right to the inside. Gain is two. This is second and eight, Blue Bombers. More heat on Kahari Jones. Eluded the first rush. At midfield, he's got Stiegel. Stiegel is good to go down to the 25-yard line. The yards he picks up after making the catch are one of the things that make him such a great receiver. Well, first of all, the number one target was taken away. There's Charles Roberts. He's the number one target. Dave Thomas tracks him. Now, Kahari Jones has to buy some time because his number one target's covered. And there is Milt Stiegel, who works himself open over the middle in front of safety Sean Gallant and then does a little bit with it after the catch. In total, 59 yards for Stiegel. And a first and 10 for the Blue Bombers set up at the Renegades, 23. Three receivers to the far side. Kahari Jones looked for Charles Roberts, and he drew extra coverage over there. Keaton Cromarty was swinging out with Roberts, well, and really there was no play. Well, well, here's you know what Milt Stiegel's going to see the football a lot more in this game, even that he's seen so far, and I'll tell you why. This is one of the early ones. This is the one he takes a hit on earlier in this drive. Of course, he caught that last one over the middle. Ottawa is going to run a lot of man-to-man -man defense because they want to put a linebacker quickly onto Charles Roberts. That means that they'll be one-on-one -on -one with receiver and defensive back for Milt Stiegel. Second and 10. Bombers at the Renegades, 23, and there's the touchdown. Arlen Bruce, the third. Arlen Bruce has his second touchdown of the season. And that's the first time the Blue Bombers have scored points in the opening quarter in 2002. Yeah, and they heard about it all week. So you know they wanted to come out and end it. Stiegel got them almost all the way down. Arlen Bruce the third celebrates around the goalpost for the Bomber receivers. It's Winnipeg on top, 7-0. Milt Stiegel sets it up. Arlen Bruce the third finishes it off. He sure does. He's got an assist to Milt Stiegel because Stiegel is going to be number three in a four receiver set right there. See Milt Stiegel? He's the deep guy going through the zone. Stoddard comes underneath and it's a busted coverage from the Ottawa Renegades. Ralph Staten has to be deep. He doesn't. He's influenced by Milt Stiegel. And number 41 just can't get back to Arlan Bruce. Bombers are on the board first. Short kick coming down to Derek Ford, who's not normally in the return formation. So the first quarter drought is over for the Blue Bombers. Zero points through the boards until now. 
and and that's you know you want to get your team out to a good start Kahari Jones last year was a slow starter as well he came on when the game became that much more important in the third and fourth quarter but well it's you, not how you begin it's how you finish but I think right. it is a little bit worrisome when you look at what the Bombers have gone through this season Dan Crowley has Jimmy Oliver and that'll be a first down for the Renegades well, and it's easy to see what the Renegades want to do early in this game with the, all the excitement and the hype leading into this game. You know the Bombers are fired up. They want to get the ball to the outside in the quick hitch game. Quick hitches to Jimmy Oliver. They want to get the ball outside and make the Winnipeg Blue Bombers hustle and try and take the energy out of their legs, take the energy out of all this hype, and try getting them running around from sideline to sideline. I thought Oliver had it, and he does. Actually speaking, when you see the chains go out and you've already said first down, you start to second guess yourself. Well, no, don't do that, Hawkeye. You were bang on. And there's Jimmy Oliver this season, has the one touchdown, 180 yards so far. Touchdown versus the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in week one. Six catches for Oliver last week for 75 yards. Renegades first down right at the 45. Probably calm and cool, at least for the moment. And Oki Brechterfield was there. See, but when the game plan is to get the back quickly to the outside of your running backs or to your receivers, and they are covered, then that can be a problem. And Oki Brechterfield, number 19, right off the edge, you're going to see him working one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He uses his arms, great strength, great power and gets to Dan Crowley, who had to hang on to that football because his number one target, Darren Davis, was covered by Brian Clark. Second sack of the season for Brechterfield. He had two all of last year. So this is second and 15 after the five-yard loss. Crowley goes deep. Out. Oh. Montana was in behind Coleman for a split second. Well, he was behind Coleman, but it was an inside pattern. It was a shorter pattern, and Marvin Coleman, John, had jumped it. He, that was an in route or down and in from Denny Montana. Marvin Coleman was there first. That's the veteran Coleman. He sat at about 10 yards to the left of your screen. And when this ball's in the air, watch Coleman jump up in there. It's like, if that ball's on line, it's right in the five on his jersey. Coleman is now back near the 23. Ready for Harper's punts. Won't have a play on it. Far side, trickling out of bounds. It's the Bombers on top. That was a 46-yard punt. This is Wendy's CFL Live from Winnipeg. Great beginning for Kahari Jones on home turf here in Winnipeg tonight. Yeah, when you start and get a nice drive, six plays, and go, oh, just one yard shy of 100. A couple of key plays to Milt Stiegel, one a 59-yard catch. And then the touchdown to Bruce for 23. And that's the 7-0 advantage for Dave Ritchie. And the Blue Bombers. He worked his troops this week. Worked oh, them hard. I can imagine he must have. From the 23, first down. Jones to the near side. It's Drover making the catch away from one. Tough to bring down. Now. Jeff Drover, second catch of the season. Might have hurt his hand there at the end of that, fighting for extra yards. Jeff Drover just refusing to go down. And he's not going to tell anyone of his hand is hurting a little bit. One, two, three shots at him. Here comes another. Wait a minute. There's, well, four. Oh, that was the helmet right in the right shoulder. And right after that, he grabbed his hand. A couple of big hits for 56, Keaton Cromarty. Here's Charles Roberts. A penalty marker went down. Mentioned Dave Ritchie worked his troops hard this week. Now, now, these are the rumors that I hear flying around as the week goes on, that there was a Winnipeg day off that the team ended up in full pads. Ooh. <laughs> Offside, Ottawa, first down. Now, I say that because back in Ottawa right now, Eric Tillman and Dave Ritchie, of course, go back. Eric Tillman, the general manager for the Ottawa Renegades. And I've got this sneaky suspicion that some of the things that they said after the game may have been deliberate to maybe see if Dave Ritchie would work his troops a little harder and then maybe they're a little tired in the fourth quarter. It could be a strategy, could it? Something along those lines. I don't know. Jones in more trouble here. And he'll go down this time. 
Cromarty was one there, and so was Kelly Wiltshire, who was the defensive player of the week for his play last week against Winnipeg. Kelly Wiltshire, number one right there. I also saw Mike Moten involved in the play. Pretty good all-out rush. You see Wiltshire, he's just on the rush. There's Moten. He's going to end up getting first contact. Kahari Jones rolls out. He only has two receivers to look at. They're covered, and, and he has to look through a six foot six, 283-pound Mike Moten. Loss of 15, second and 25, and Charles Roberts won't get but two yards of that back. So a big defensive stand for Ottawa. Yeah, and right after now... After the Bombers had scored with relative ease. Well, right now, John, what they're doing is they're taking away number one. And that's the number one target for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And he wears number one. That's Charles Roberts. And what they like to do is just swing him the ball and get him into space. And Ottawa's answer to that so far in this game in the first quarter is to get a linebacker on him immediately. R rather than drop off, get a linebacker up there on him right away and take away the throw. Early happy birthday wishes to Bob Cameron, who turns 48 at midnight. 48 years young. 48 years young and still kicking him high into any wind that will and now, blow across this stadium. And now, in Winnipeg. He's just, now he's upset because he has to reload. And and violation, Winnipeg number six. And he has to take still the time down. count and he has to kick it again. In his 23rd season in the CFL. He doesn't look a day over 38. No, we'll change that graphic the next time you see him. At, At midnight, midnight, it automatically well, changes. Flips over. We've yes. got it. We're right on top of it. It's in the computer that way. Now, and, and another now one. Wade Miller takes off and, and hits Jason Krult. And, and now it becomes a problem for Winnipeg. Because, you know, that first time count penalty to get everyone lined up right isn't a big deal five yarder no I mean you're, you're better to take that five yard penalty than have a block kick and have a block punt absolutely but now they're gonna back him up again and now and now Bob Cameron punts from his goal line and any return at all Donnie Ash is in field goal range charge was on Cameron got it away not deep Ashley at midfield a little spin surrounded by blue bomber jerseys two on the return 35 on the punt and a penalty flag flies. We'll get back to check out that story when we return. Ottawa Re Renegades penalized for unnecessary roughness. It was on Donnie Ashley at the bottom of that pile. The returner, you know, both coaches are, uh, have to be a little concerned that the players can control their emotions. Darren Davis stops in his track by Denny Fortney. Looking back to last game, 85 yards unnecessary roughness penalties against the Renegades last time. Well, in, in cases like this where the emotions are running so high, one of the keys is to control those emotions and don't be the team that gets that last hit in, that last retaliation hit, because that's the one that gives you the 15-yard penalty and puts your team in a bad hole. And this isn't a deep hole for the Renegades, but look where they would have been 15 yards upfield to begin this drive. Now they're looking at second and long behind the intended receiver. And it almost ended up in the hands of Mike Maurer. Well, I'm not so sure that Rylan Wickman, number 55, didn't get his hand. You see 55 going right up the hole there. Well, actually... That looked like it did come out of there clean, but he got some good pressure going one-on-one -on -one and pushing Carl Coulter back there. Oliver was the target. Mike Maurer had a chance with it to one-hand it, but it's third down in a hurry. And Harper is in. Coleman has company back there this time. Charles Roberts. Charge was on from Donaldson. This is Charles Roberts. This guy can flat out fly. And here he goes. He won't be caught, I don't believe. Well, hang on. Slow down just a second. Whoa. And grabbed by Grayson Schillingford. Wow. Grayson Schillingford. Huge burst of speed for Schillingford. And I thought Roberts was gone. He took two back last year. 
Well, normally he would be. There's Roberts right at the back corner of your screen. Now watch, one move up to the left and then back across the field to the right. Schillingbird is behind by about seven yards, but look at him make up ground. Whoa, did he ever. Wow. You see number eight right there. See, right now he's about seven yards behind, and this is, this is a touchdown for Charles Roberts. Schillingford doesn't quit and catches him, saves a touchdown. 57 on the return, and the Bombers are set up at the 29. Here's the big guy, Mike Sellers. Hasn't been used a lot to carry the ball and was wondering about that this week, but he gets... His number called early in this one. Well, it's tough when Charles Roberts in the backfield to find a way to get Mike Sellers the football. But they will as the season progresses. And talking to Paul Lapolice, the offensive coordinator, he definitely wants to see Sellers carry it and catch it. He's got very good hands for a big man. Sellers wants the football, but if you're running back, everybody wants the football. Six three, two 260 pounds, Mike Sellers. This is to the little guy, it's Charles Roberts. Ball is loose. Ottawa had the chance. Who came up with it? It looks like the Renegades have the ball on the first turnover of the night. Yeah, they do. We, I think it's Kelly Wilshire will end up coming up with that fumble. Interesting already in Winnipeg as the Renegades and the Blue Bombers do battle for the second time in six days. Roberts puts it on the ground, strip loose, and the Renegades are first and 10 when we return. And we're ready for it here in Winnipeg. John Grace combining with Dave Thomas for a huge play for the Renegades. Watch how quickly number seven, John Grace gets across the formation to strip the ball from Charles Roberts. Dave Thomas recovers at the end of that scrum. But how about the play from Grayson Schillingford to stop the punt return touchdown? It saved it indeed. Davis was in big trouble, and he's found more. Brian Clark playing extremely well in that Bomber linebacking core. And here are the numbers thus far. Well, both teams with four first downs. Fairly close when you look down the line, although the passing yards for the Ottawa Renegades way down now they're they're going with the game plan to throw those little hitch passes out to the wide receivers and try to dump the ball to their running backs and darren davis but sooner or later dan crowley's gonna have to go down the field as well loss of one second and 11. crowley to the near side and denny montana makes the catch they and call it a catch. catch coleman was covering and we'll see where they spot the ball it will be enough for a first down Dan Crowley will use his legs and, and, and stretch the pocket out. This is full out rollout to get that defensive line running, get them tired out. What Ottawa are hoping is that in the fourth quarter it pays off. The big guys up front, Doug Brown, Denny Fortney, get outside containment, throw that strike to Denny Montana. Whoa! Harold Nash guarded loose. They say no catch. An incredible hit by Harold Nash. Now the talking begins once more. Montana usually only takes, hit. usually only takes one big hit. Here's Harold Nash and Eddie Brown. Hello. Down he goes and he gets up talking. Eddie Brown was the target. It was Montana who didn't see him coming. Montana goes to the far side. It'll be second and ten. Bomber fans want it ruled a fumble. Eddie Brown makes the catch there. Mustafa Muhammad on the tackle. Well, now this secondary is flying around, and you've got to give credit to Eddie Brown for getting up and just hanging on to that last throw from Dan Crowley because he took the big hit from Harold Nash, then regrouped, got over there, caught one. It was short of the first down because Mustafa Muhammad put a pretty good hit on him. Now Eddie Brown wants to talk to his teammates and say, let's start being the hammer and not the nail. Coleman is deep, along with Charles Roberts. Harper's kick to Roberts. 
and they had Charles Roberts absolutely surrounded. One for the highlight reel. Nash the hammer. Brown the nail. Wendy CFL Live from Vancouver tomorrow night with the Ticats in town to take on the Lions. Hamilton coming off a nice win. The Lions looking for number one. Yeah, their backs are against the wall, and if you want to go check out what should be a physical game, at least from, well, for sure from the BC point of view, they've got to win. There's the number to call. 589 Roar. We'd like to thank the Blue Bombers for lifting the blackout here tonight so all of Manitoba can watch the Blue Bombers and enjoy the game. Quite a few last second tickets sold for this one. Over 3,000 today alone. And this play is ruled down as Roberts ended up with the ball and it was whistled dead. Bombers are pretty excited about the fact Illegal that Illegal procedure, Winnipeg number 60, still first down. This trash talk, bad blood, headline stuff has sold a few extra tickets for this one because and that's pretty good game day walk up. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then you've seen by a couple of the big hits that they are walking it like they talk it. Harold Nash getting involved and the crowd loves it. See their team come out and play aggressively in the first quarter. On the penalty, first and 15, Bombers at the 36. Jones steps up, taking out for the first time, and there's another flag down. That's going to be holding. It's going to be holding against Brett McNeil, who is working one-on-one -on, -one on Mike Moten, and when Moten tried to slide to the outside, Brett McNeil just hung on for a split second too long. Mike Moten has been involved early in this game. Winnipeg 57, first down repeated. Number 98 is going to work to the outside. Watch 98 eventually right in the middle here of your screen. See, he works to the outside. See that hold to the left shoulder pad? That was the one. That split second too long for Brett McNeil. A net loss of 19, making it first and 25. Bombers back now at their 26. Jones to the far side. Jamie Stoddard made the catch. There's not much running room after that. Last year, Jamie Stoddard really started to settle in in his second year in the Canadian Football League with 526 yards, had four touchdowns, got a chance to get his feet wet a little bit. Getting a chance to play a little more tonight. Just two catches, 15 yards coming into this one tonight. And the Bombers looking at second and 17. Now up to the 34. Kahari Jones, shotgun, looks deep. And a penalty marker comes down near the 50 on the coverage. Ricky Bell wants to go over there at number 25 and find out what the call is quickly because he thinks that ball was so far overthrown that it was uncatchable. To the left of your screen, Ricky Bell is the deep player, number 25. Wilshire had jumped Charles Roberts. That for forces Carhar Jones to go deep. Winnipeg, number 50. Forward pass interference. Ottawa, 25. Second down repeated. So nothing changes as a result well, yeah. of two penalties. Ricky Bell catches a break, though, because that ball was overthrown, and he really didn't have to go and put that hit in the Winnipeg receiver. But because of another penalty up in the line of scrimmage, and I believe he was talking about Mike Sutherland. I don't see a 50 in that offensive line at this moment. I don't have a 50 on the Bomber roster anywhere. Kahari Jones, second and long again. Oh, oh, baby, what a play. Just about as Vernon Mitchell got in the oh, way oh, of oh. an almost perfect throw to Arlen Bruce well, the third. Arlen Bruce wide open down the seam, except for the fact that Vernon Mitchell showed some great closing speed. Defensive backs, great clothing, closing speed. Look at Mitchell. He makes up about 15 yards of real estate to knock that ball out of the air, or Arlen Bruce is right down the seam.
So the Bombers into a punting situation. Cameron gets it away. Eddie Brown halfway across the field to try and hang on. Gets a good bounce. Made it interesting, but he was out of bounds rather quickly. 11 on the return, 47 on the punts. Renegades will begin near the 40-yard line when we return to Winnipeg. Harold Nash has turned in the hit of the night thus far, has he not? All Canadian in 2001. Let's take one more look at the hit of the night at this point. <laughs> On Eddie Brown, the ball squirted loose. However, it was not ruled a catch. Montana went in there after that football, even though it was ruled incomplete, just to be sure. Renegades from the 40. Crowley to his left, a little jump pass, and Davis had it, and then turned around and dropped it. It's interesting play, and one that Darren Davis and the Ottawa Renegades like because it has been positive for them in the past this year. It's a little shovel pass. Joe Pow Pow has had this in his offenses, whatever team he's been coaching. With a little jump to it. Well, he had to jump because he had a Winnipeg Blue Bomber tracking him down. So he had, it couldn't be a shovel, it had to be more of a hook pass, hook shot. Jimmy Oliver flanks to the near side. Denny Montana, far side of the field, second and 10, Ottawa. Nice pump fake by Crowley. And downtown, Eddie Brown couldn't get all the way there. That's the progression of the hitch passes that they tried to do for the first quarter and a half. They tried to do a lot of those outside hitch passes. But in order to do this, you need to have time to throw the football accurately. And you're going to see that Dan Crowley right here, Brechtefield on number 19, pushes his man right back into Crowley's lap. And Crowley overthrows that by about two yards. Because Eddie Brown was in behind Raphael Ball. Another two and out for the Renegades. And Charles Roberts, who had a great return earlier, waits back near the 25. Grabbed by the sweater and tossed to the turf. And a flag comes down. Well, Schellingford again. And remember, he tracked Charles Roberts down and saved the, saved the touchdown. Uh, and I thought that he grabbed him cleanly around the shoulder pad. I thought he grabbed a hold of the shirt and the shoulder pad. Let's see what they call Major it. Major foul, face mask, Ottawa number eight. First down. Well, let's bring in Greg Musselman. Okay, thank John Wells. Uh, Brendan Tamman is the Vice President of Player Personnel for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You know, John was uh, saying earlier that, uh, you know, the trash talk worked. We got uh, a few extra thousand people here tonight, Brendan. Yeah, courtesy Dave and Eric. It worked out pretty good, but Ottawa's got a good team, so people are seeing a good game as we thought we would. Nice to see uh, your team obviously come out and uh, do something in the first quarter, something you've had trouble doing in the previous three games. Yeah, well, we knew we had to, to. To let Ottawa in the game early and get a lead would have been tough, but uh, they're hanging in to their credit, so it's going to be tough. I know there's uh, somebody special that you'd like to say hi to tonight. Hey, Eric, why didn't you make the trip? We were going to buy you supper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to you guys. Uh, it, it continues. It just it never ends. Eric is not going to get a cut of the extra 3,000 tickets sold today. That's no, guaranteed. So. It was called face masking, but we disagree. No, it wasn't a face mask. It was missed. It looked like a face mask the way Charles Roberts spun around. But Dave Ritchie got a couple of bonus yards there because I didn't think that Grayson Schellingford, here you go, here's another look at it. See, that's that's the left shoulder. Pulls him down and throws him on the ground. A little jersey, a little shoulder, but that's legal. Roberts threw the head fake in there. That might have uh, faked that out the officials. Procedure call. Spins it to first and 15. So one very impressive scoring drive for the Blue Bombers in the opening quarter. And neither team has moved the football effectively since that. Heat was on Kahari Jones. Stoddard was the target. Ralph Staten was coming. So you how Charles Roberts is being tracked. This time, they'll, Ottawa will use safety Sean Gallant. And, and, and here's the key. Sean Roberts has gone this way. Sean Gallant has gone with him to safety. There's no one in the middle. 
And you will see Milt Stiegel, if they keep doing that, Ottawa keeps doing that, Milt Stiegel will go right down that hole and try and get in behind where Sean Gallant just vacated. Kahari Jones looks at second and 15, charge on again, got it away, far side. And it's a great catch on the far side, but a marker is down back behind the line. And that would indicate the holding area. Second catch for Jeff Drover. But, this is pretty. But let's see what the officials come up with and see if this catch, which is really nice. I mean, that's that's going completely horizontally to come up with the football. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Oh, Winnipeg boy. 57. After the play, first down. Well, and those are the ones that just make coaches go gray and you can see Dave Ritchie has seen a few well Brett McNeil got called on the holding earlier that one was against Mike Moten and now the frustration get to him a little bit and now he gets that late hit call bombers will get a first down but it's back at the 38 instead of where Drover made the catch Jones to his right Grover again, and he's got seven, maybe eight yards. Donald Ruiz was there. Now it's Kahari Jones' turn to use the pocket, get outside, see slide protection up front. That means all the offensive linemen slide to their right. Kahari Jones in stride, delivers that football to Drover, who's got a couple already in this game. So Brett McNeil penalty, although it cost him some yardage, didn't cost him the first down because it was after the fact. They get another chance here on second and short. Second and two. Hit, play, hit, play, hit. Marcus Howell was the intended receiver. No penalty on that, but there is a flag back near the line of scrimmage. Major foul, roughing the passer, Ottawa 90. First down. Clint Wayne. Clinton Wayne. Clinton Wayne is right here. Let's take a look and see what he does. He gets cut at the line of scrimmage. He steps over him. Is that 90 or 98? Yeah, well, 90, 98. 98 was right beside him. He was saying, no, you can't do that, Clinton. Uh, that's why. So I it is 90. Him. We had it right. Yeah. First and 10, Winnipeg at the Ottawa 50. Quick pass, Stiegel, the target, oh! And there was Kelly Wilshire all over Kahari Jones, and Stiegel was the intended receiver, and Kelly Gerald Wilshire. Vaughn was there. It's called the A-gap, it's A-gap blue. Watch Kelly Wilshire go right through here, and no one accounts for Kelly Wilshire. And when you go through the A-gap, which is between the center and the guard, that's the quickest path to the quarterback. Kahari Jones was just trying to throw the ball with a little bit of air under it to hope Milt Stiegel got to it. But instead, Gerald Vaughn got to it first. Still with penalties and all. It's a decent drive for the Bombers. Second and 10, Ottawa 50. Jones takes another one from Wilshire. And the pass is short, but it almost trickled through to Eddie Brown. Or to Arlen Bruce, I should say. But now Ottawa's decided, let's just see if we can get to Kahari Jones before this time Wiltshire comes off the edge. Remember, he went through the middle last time. This time he's off the edge, and he's there along with Dave Thomas. And Kahari Jones has, in slow motion, one steamboat, two steamboats. That's slow motion. Now you speed it up, it becomes one and a half steamboats. That's not enough. Kahari Jones has taken a couple tonight. Took one solid hit last week in Ottawa from John Grace. Cameron kicks it away. Eddie Brown, nowhere to go, far side of the field, nothing on the return. The Heat's on Kahari. In the form of number one. Wiltshire in there, back to back on Jones. This guy has been a force since returning to play for Dave Ritchie. He leads the Bombers in sacks, David Benefield. Well, and Dave Ritchie is going to cut him loose. In other words, give him the freedom to 
make an outside move, make any kind of move to get to the quarterback and put him back where he's natural, and that's it, rushing the passer. Renegades beginning at the 12. Crowley had it tipped and intercepted. McGriggs comes up with the ball. Lamar McGriggs. First interception going that way. Tipped at the line. Right to Lamar McGriggs. It's interesting. Ryland Wickman was over there along with Wayne Weathers. Wayne Weathers has already got his hands on one ball. That's the second one. I love what Lamar McGriggs does after the fact. A little contact there on Jimmy Oliver. Rather than run outside, he puts the brakes on and tries to find Oliver again. He wants to hit him one more time. Linebackers, even with the ball in their hand, can't get out of the out of the habit of hitting people. So the turnover to the Bombers sets Winnipeg up in great shape at the seven-yard line. Assist goes to Wayne Weathers. Jeff Drover flanks to the near side. Kahari Jones gets some heat, got it away. Touchdown, Charles. Roberts into the end zone. Third receiving touchdown this season for Charles Roberts. And that's the way you take care of pressure on the quarterback. That play is no different than like a screen pass. And a screen pass is basically designed to relieve pressure. So the first play, after the interception, Kahari Jones, Charles Roberts, nice little move. He's in the end zone. Interception, Lamar McGriggs, set up by Wayne Weathers, who tipped the pass. Lamar McGriggs is dropping in his own defense. Weathers tips it, McGriggs hits Oliver, and then, wait, I want to hit Oliver again, goes back to hit Oliver. Then he goes down, and in one play, the Bang. Bombers take advantage. And, and Kahari Jones here is going to draw the rush. Watch this. He's going to make it look like, look, I'm going to roll to No, I'm going to drop it off to Charles Roberts. And he took two renegades with him. One, middle linebacker Dave Thomas. Roberts goes one-on-one, -on -one and he's in the end zone. One-on-one -on -one with Ralph Staten. See Dave Thomas and John Grace right there. And he, that they were drawn to Kahari Jones. He dumps it over their head. Staten looked like he was playing goal there for a minute oh, on yeah, the line I mean, because he was stopped dead in his tracks. You could be the best tackler in the history of the universe and not stop him at that well, point. Particularly when you're standing still and no. trying to react after that. No way. Couple of touchdowns for the Blue Bombers tonight and a 14-0 lead. Here's Eddie Brown on a huge kickoff back to the goal line. Markers are down and so is downtown Eddie Brown. Well, Kahari Jones and Paul Lapolice likely have talked after the last series. And watch Jones come this way and draw the both Dave Thomas and John Grace, number seven, number 58. That allows a little space for Charles Roberts, and there's the one-on-one -on, -one on Ralph State, and that's a tough position to be in for anybody. Illegal block, Ottawa 31, first down. Paul Lapolice gets excited. He's one of the youngest coaches, one of the youngest offensive coordinators in the league at 32 years old and trying to figure out a way of getting the one football into all his weapons' hands. Well, he's got a bunch, doesn't he? Stiegel and Bruce commanding. Charles Roberts, Mike Sellers want the ball. Right now, it's the Renegades first down at the five-yard line. Less than five to play in the opening half. Crowley hands it off. And Davis... Nice run, but the ball squirts loose. And the Bombers say they have it again. Marvin Coleman out of the pile. And Winnipeg has the turnover touch tonight. Well, what goes around comes around, I guess, in the turnover department. Last week, six turnovers for the Renegades. They turn it into 14 points. It all begins with a little bit of a high snap that Crowley has to try and go up and corral. Then he gets it to Darren Davis. Not a bad run, Glenn. Well, well Danny Fortney comes back, and I think it was his own man, Danny Montana, trying to get a block that knocked the ball out of Darren Davis's hands. 
So Davis drops it. Coleman comes up with it. And look where the Bombers are. Almost a replay of where they were in the last sequence. Just outside the 10-yard line this time as Kahari Jones looks to the end zone. Touchdown! Marcus Howe. That's his first of 2002. Oh, boy. Making quick work of these turnovers. It's one thing to turn the ball over. It's another to turn it all over right in your own backyard. That's 14 points in about 14 seconds. Well, uh, yeah, when you turn it over down around your 10-yard line, it spells trouble. Marcus Howe celebrating his first touchdown reception this season. Getting a starting job as one of the Blue Bomber wideouts. Well, Darren Davis is used to looking at the tacklers for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's going to try and avoid them, but he doesn't count on his own man knocking the ball out of his hands. Watch Denny Montana, 89, right there, the back of Denny Montana knocks the ball. And when it comes out, Marvin Coleman replaces it, recovers the ball, gets down to the 10 yard line, and here's the touchdown. And this is just a perfect pass right to the corner. Marcus Howell times it perfectly. He's quick when he wants to be, or when he has to be. Two turnovers, and on the very next play, Kahari Jones gets the Bombers into the Renegades end zone. Well, heading into this game, the first quarter was terrible for Winnipeg, pretty good in the first half for the Ottawa Renegades. So far in this first half, it's the opposite. Absolute opposite. So Pow Pow has to figure out a way to get the Renegades on the scoreboard in a hurry. We knew the Bombers would not take this one lightly, did we not? No, and again, you know, it's all you... The way the Winnipeg Blue Bombers talked about last week, they said, you know, we gave them the game with all our turnovers. Now, Ottawa can't be saying at halftime when they go in there saying, guys, we're giving them a game because of turnovers. Winnipeg came to play. They're fired up, they're hitting, and when they do that, they're creating some turnovers. Montana got a hand on it, kept it out of the end zone. Not a usual returner back there. And the Bombers read it well and drag them down. Number 80, Jeff Drover making the tackle so so Kahari Jones who going into this week was told that he didn't get off to good starts has just silenced the critics because in this start you've got two three touchdowns and we're not quite finished the first half Paul that police told me about the criticism he said you know I went and told Kahari don't even think about it because you start thinking about it, you're gonna start believing it Dan Crowley on first down, Ottawa. That's Montana. She had one tackler, but then on second effort, Marvin Coleman recovered and made the stop. Now, when you get a couple of quick touchdowns from your offense and turnovers, that just pumps you up defensively. Now, start flying around the football. The game becomes fun for defenders. Marvin Coleman over there making things happen. Just recovered a fumble. Watch out for Mr. Benefield. Blue Bombers are on a roll. Back-to-back -back touchdowns off of turnovers, and there's the lead. It's 21-0 Winnipeg. Halftime is approaching. It's a great night for the Bomber fans and cheerleaders. So far, with Winnipeg on top, the Rogues Gallery will join us about three minutes from now. They'll break it down for you like no one can break it down. Second down, Ottawa. Crowley. Handles the snap, looks deep. Oliver was the target. And the coverage was by Mustafa Muhammad, who played very well in his first two games. And Dave Ritchie said had a bit of a tough week last time. 
And he has been a problem for Dan Crowley, as has that whole secondary for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers that have come out hitting. And really, when you come out hitting, you're taking away that short game that Crowley and Joe Papa are trying to establish, the quick hitch game. That's why you saw in that last play, Crowley just try and throw one deep, maybe make something happen before the end of the half. But now the biggest concern for Ottawa is this next series, because with over two minutes remaining, and that guy on the field, at any time, Winnipeg can be explosive. Harper tries to keep it away from Roberts. He'll take it on one hop right at midfield, and that'll draw a flag, perhaps somewhat intentional in one way. A sure. six-yard punt rather than let him escape again. No, that's a great play. That's Mike Villamick, the number one draft pick for the Ottawa Renegades, and he's going to be on all the special teams. You have to pay your dues when you get to the next level, and he's a tremendous running no back. No yards. Ottawa, first down. And he will be a great running back in the future for the Renegades. But he made a good decision there because you don't want to give Charles Roberts room when the ball's bouncing around. It's only a five-yard penalty. You might see him out there on the field at some point tonight, number 35, as a tight end because he's got part of that on his, yeah, in his playbook. For oh, very good hands. Tonight. Yep, very good hands. Bomber's in great shape. 2.38 on the clock till halftime. And here's Roberts bursting through. Very effective, this Blue Bomber team, when they've had opportunities in this one tonight. Anytime they get in the red zone, they're coming away with points, basically. They've had nine opportunities, seven times they put up majors. They had to settle for field goals twice. Anytime you get points like that, 55 points in the red zone. They didn't get in the red zone, if you're talking inside the 20, once last week versus Ottawa. And there is some discrepancy. Is it inside the 20, inside the 25? It's three for three tonight. Sellers can't find anywhere to go, then slipped outside. There, he was pinned by Staten. Kahari Jones has, has done a nice job with the help of his offensive coordinator, Paul Lapolice, of making some small adjustments. Early in the game, Ottawa went to try and track Charles Roberts. So, Kahari Jones went to Milt Stiegel. Then when they took Milt Stiegel, Paul Lapolice makes a decision, let's go back to Charles Roberts. We get down inside the 14, let's do that little shovel pass, little dump pass. Take some of the pressure off our quarterback. So they're making some nice adjustments on the fly. Here's Troy Westwood, first opportunity tonight. Cameron puts it down, Westwood puts it up, and it's through. So the Bombers are four for four in their possession so far tonight. When they've had good opportunities, a 50-yarder for Troy Westwood, who missed a couple last week, including one from 51. Well, he was perfect going into last week. He missed a couple as long as on the season so far. 50, just made it right now. From Winnipeg, down Highway 1. For Wendy's Friday Night Football, Eskimos and the Rough Riders. 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time. Well, I'll tell you, anytime I played 11 years in Saskatchewan, anytime Edmonton showed up, there was a rivalry. I'm sure that'll be the hotline in Regina. You guys used to hammer the Eskimos all the time, didn't you? <laughs> oh! Almost intercepted again. Oh! As Crowley threw it up, and Mustaf. Mohammed was the closest player to the ball. Well, Mohammed, I think, was bearing down on Darren Davis and had his focus right there on the back of the running back, or he is gone. See, number three, it, it hit him almost right in the knee. He was a step away from going for six, really, had he been a, well, a yard he was, closer. He was looking at Darren Davis. He's he looking at the ball. He dies for it. Second and ten, Renegades try to get something going here with a long pass to Schillingford. 1.38 on the clock. Dave Donaldson was in covering. Well, this is a matchup that Ottawa has to be very careful with, and I'm talking about David Benefield going one-on-one -on -one with Darren Davis. Here's Darren Davis right here. He's going to be asked to cover number 56. Watch this. This is just straight power rush. You see Benefield sees he's got a little running back on him, and bam, bam, right back into the lap of Dan Crowley. Now, now, Darren Davis is tough, and he's strong. But that is a load to try and stop.
Harper back at his 20 and a flag comes down. Charles Roberts wrapped up by Donald Ruiz. Prior to the game on Friday night from Taylor Field, a franchise story, a year in the life of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Put together a couple of years ago when the Riders were in the midst of a tough season. Transition. They were in transition. Transition. And that'll be followed, of course, by the kickoff at Taylor Field. Nice start to this season for Neilon Green's Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, and Joe, and one. Joe Pow Pow John was a member of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders back in 1984. And a nicer start for the Edmonton Eskimos, unbeaten going in there. So it could be an interesting game. One note here, Troy Westwood has taken the lead with six points tonight among all-time Blue Bomber scorers, surpassing Trevor Kennard. First place in the Bomber list. Kennard finished his career with 1,840 in Westwood. The good times and the bad times is the all-time career points leader on the Bomber's list. And for most of those kicks, Bob Cameron has held the football, and it's been a one-two combination because I can't emphasize enough, and all you have to do is ask Matt Kellett and Jason Crum over in BC about this. The trust factor between the holder and the kicker is so important to the success of that group. Well, only when Cameron was injured a couple of games last year would this two yeah. have been apart because Cameron was the Iron Man until he had a little back problem late last season well the kicker has to trust the holder completely and and you know it's a good situation in ottawa too because you have the veteran glenn harper as a holder and so cameron he knows how to calm the group down he can keep the huddle away from the kicker which is part of it because in the big kicks the huddle and all those offensive linemen they all of a sudden in the in the big kicks for the game winning field goals they think they're kicker coaches and they go over those big offensive line, they go, keep your head down, make sure you don't look at the, you know. <laughs> and it's up to the holder to keep those guys away. And, and for Dave Miller Johnson in Ottawa, he's got a nice situation there too, because he has Glenn Harper as his holder. And Harper, of course, has 13 years experience in the CFL. So he can settle him down. Miller Johnson is the new kid on the block. Slight delay here while Michael Borrell, defensive end for the Renegades, was helped to the sidelines. Kahari Jones and the Bombers have lots of time here with a minute 38 to go. Howell down the sidelines. And the coverage by Ricky Bell was awfully good. You know, and Kahari Jones over the last couple of years has done this a bunch. And that is just to say, okay, I've got one-on-one -on -one coverage. And one-on-one -on -one coverage I'm happy with. You know, a lot of guys, quarterbacks in the league that want to go deep, they'll wait till the guy's open. But... Kahari Jones saw Ricky Bell stride for stride with Marcus Howell, much like he was on the touchdown to Howell, and he just threw it up there. He's got confidence in his guys that they'll make the play. Second and 10 at the 49. Jones has Roberts sliding out of the backfield, and the Renegades played it well, dropping him at the 50. All Canadian, Kahari Jones started two and two last season in his first full year as the Bombers' number one guy. Finished 14 and four. That's the best record Dave Ritchie has ever put together as a head coach in the Canadian Football League. And in that 14 and four run, that incredible win streak that will take an awful long time to duplicate, wouldn't you think? 12 straight. 12 straight wins in the season. And you know, some say they got a lot of breaks. I say when you get breaks, you work for them. And it's a lot of hard work and some good personnel moves that has got this team where it is. Cameron's kick coming down near the 15. And the Bombers are fired up. That's Harold Nash. That's an example of the hard work, though, and the little things and special teams. You see Harold Nash down there, and he's a guy who has to play every down on defense and then covers a kick and covers like a... A wild man, number double zero. Look at him go down there. Wade Miller's a special teams guy, but Harold Nash has to start. He's in there making the tackle on special teams along with Byron Capers. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Ottawa 39, first down. Couple of those against the Renegades tonight and with 54 seconds till halftime, 
Dan Crowley faces a long march to get any points in this first half now. Now you look at those turnovers. One, a ball that was batted at the line of scrimmage. Not really Dan Crowley's fault. The other, a fumble by Darren Davis. So you can't credit the turnovers to him, but I tell you something, this has been a, an Ottawa offense that's been a lot more productive leading into this week than they are so far in this first half. Well, think of the starts these Renegades have had in earlier games this season. Back well, to yeah, they've had a lead week every game. one against Saskatchewan, and they settled for a loss there, but after overtime, and then the huge lead against the Eskimos in week two, 24-7. Mm -hmm. And the Eskimos roared back to win that one going away, but they were in big trouble for a while. Well, you know, and, and for a head coach and his team, especially a young team that's, and I say young as far as playing together, it, it's, it's tests throughout the season that you find out about what kind of team you have. And right now, they haven't had this test. They have not had to come back in the second half from a deficit. So this will be the first time this season that this group of athletes have to try and do that. Well, let alone a 24-point deficit, as it looks right now like it will be. Well, and, and the pressure on them right now in this drive is to get at least one first down, and there is pressure, because with 57 le 50 seconds left in Canadian football, if you go one more down and out, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have a chance for a play and a field goal attempt. And, and, the, and the Bombers will call their timeout in the first half and make sure that Crowley now has to run a play for first down territory, and he's got about seven to go. Well, here's, here's what happens now in, the, in each locker room at halftime. Joe Pow Pow goes in there and says, guys, you just got to relax. We've, we've handed the ball to him on our 10-yard line twice. That's turned into 14 points. So let's say they have a 10-0 lead. Let's just go win each series. Win the third quarter is the message from Joe Pow Pow. And for Dave Rich, he's just got to go in there, pat him on the back, say, guys, get some water, and let's go do a little of the same. This is second and six, Ottawa. Crowley faked it once and had no one there. I don't know if Davis was the intended target. He was the closest renegade to the ball. But all of a sudden, they'll give it right back to Winnipeg with lots of time remaining. Well, Crowley's trying to complete this screen pass, but he's got Brian Clark right in his face, so he has to throw it up and over Brian Clark, and it can't get to Darren Davis. So, 46 seconds left now. Winnipeg with a golden opportunity here. Lots of time for the Bombers, and Winnipeg will get the ball out around midfield if Harper, in fact, kicks this. We almost want to give up two here, and that's ah, a good decision. Go. It's a good decision. You're going to give up three automatically, so you save a point. But the way that's stopped, this is a good decision now. The frustration part has to be for Joe Palpo that they didn't get at least one first down from their offense when they were backed up in there to end this first half, get in the room and regroup. Talk about regrouping. Yeah. They're regrouping right now because we got 42 seconds left. So they're regrouping. They're right, gathering. The hamburgers they're away and all of that. Gathering up, getting ready to go. Tidy up the desk, guys. Don't like to see too much paper on the desk. See, see, Chris Schultz is telling Dave Randorf what he's going to talk about, not the opposite. Well, look at Randorf's eyes rolling up in his head there. You know, usually you think that the host is sort of saying, okay, you go here, but no. No, no, no. Not with Chris Schultz. He's saying, hey, this is what I'm talking about, and you're going to like it. And you know why he runs the panel. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe Pow Pow runs this Ottawa Renegades team, and, you know, he's not the type to, I don't think, really explode unless things get completely out of hand at, at halftime. It's really not his personality, but... One guy that will explode at a time or two is Dave Ritchie. He certainly doesn't have to at, at this halftime break. He bristled at thoughts and suggestions that his team was overconfident going into Ottawa last week. But, you know, when you send 39 football players... It's human nature. ...from a championship team out onto the field against an expansion team, it's pretty hard to guarantee that a couple of guys didn't take it a little lightly, at least in the early going last week. story of last week's game or at least part of it was John Grace and he's involved there he's lost his hat it's good contact coming in there he's still got his mouth guard usually that mouthpiece is attached to the helmet that's part of the equipment you hook it onto the helmet Noki Brechterfield look at that hit to hit head to head 
There goes the hat. And the mouthpiece is still in there for John Grace. Now he's got to attach. See, there's the other part of the mouthpiece hanging off the mast there. So now you see, there it is. It's just hanging right in the front. And that, that's all supposed to be together. So they got to regroup that too. Kahari Jones, 34 seconds on the clock, goes for a long one, far side, and Howell can't bring it in. See, now Dave Ritchie's still aggressive with his offense with 30 seconds left. Why not? A couple first downs, maybe one big play, and we kick another field goal. I mean, the Bombers really want to shake off last week. Without question, this team goes down in history as the first to lose to the expansion Renegades. Well, and beyond that, though, I think, John, is that you never want to lose twice in a row, you, you know, no matter who you are. And it just because it, losing, like winning, is something that sort of grows on you, and you, got it, you want to shake it as quickly as you can, no matter where you are in the history of the game. Second and ten. Bruce made the catch. He'll have a first down out near the 52. 23 seconds till halftime. Kahari Jones is on a nice little roll. By the way, the last time the Bombers had a shutout was back in 1988. And guess who they were playing? The Ottawa Rough Riders. Renner Ruffies. Steagle couldn't hang on. Vaughn was covering. Bombers really struggled in the first quarter coming into this game tonight. Yeah, you, you know what? Just that right. one. We got that one out of there now. Yeah. We just, but all was, those zeros. That one's over. No points. 20 in the, the first zeros, quarter. The critics have been answered as far as starts for this team go. One way to get in field range. 11 seconds to go. The Bombers have a shot. Maybe one play here to get in field goal range for Westwood. That could do it if he can get down in a hurry. Harlan Bruce the third is down with four seconds on the clock, and that comes Westwood. See Kahari Jones pumped up about that. That's important. Yeah, you want to get his points as many as you can, as quickly as you can, and why not? Troy Westwood just hit a 50-yarder. He's looking at about a 47, 48-yarder right now, right down the middle. Already the Bombers' all-time leading scorer setting that milestone. On his 50-yard field goal just a few moments ago. Zeros on the clock. Oh, pulled it wide. It'll sail through for a single point. Boy, that looked like he hit that ball cleanly. It just, just faded on him a little bit. Made the 50-yarder, missed from 45, but the Bombers head to the dressing room with a 27-0 lead on Ottawa. Well, regroup time for Joe Pow Pow. I thought Troy Westwood hit this cleanly. Pin was good from Bob Cameron. Kick was up, and maybe the wind off the corner of the stadium caught it. The last minute's a long field goal. Just sailed a little bit wide to save that man a couple of points, but there's been a bunch against him so far. Mm, indeed so. It was all Winnipeg on home turf in the rematch here tonight. Back in Winnipeg, Blue Bombers head coach Dave Ritchie is a happy guy. Glenn, he got production from offense, defense, and special teams, and he was talking about that. On the return, Schillingford. Grayson Schillingford and penalty markers go down. We'll check that out in a second. First, let's bring in Greg Musselman. Ottawa Renegades head coach Joe Papa, you give up a couple of uh, turnovers late in that uh, first quarter. That's tough against a team like Winnipeg. Well, you know what? You can't do that and expect to win. And, you know, it happened last week, but they're, they're playing a good game. And, you know, we, we need to come out and, uh, and make first downs and stay on the field on offense and hopefully get some turnovers on defense. What kind of adjustments uh, did you talk about uh, during the half? Not read too many. Just we got to protect the ball better. And you know what? Uh, we got to we got to compete a little bit better than we've been doing. We haven't played the way we've been playing the last two weeks. And you got to give these guys credit. Uh, they're making plays and we're not. Thanks, Joe. Good luck in the second half. Problems continue for the Renegades. Holding call on the return, and that means they begin at the 25. 
Davis has absolutely nowhere to go against that bomber defense. And two flags fly as a result of that play. Yeah, they're a little taunting after the fact. Looked like the Winnipeg Blue Bombers doing some taunting there as they push that pile back. But talk about the Ottawa offense struggling in the first half. Their deepest penetration in the first half was in their very first drive of the game, and that got them down to the Winnipeg 46-yard line. They haven't got any closer Major that. foul, unnecessary roughness, Winnipeg 0-0. Objectionable conduct, taunting, Winnipeg 36. First down. Nash gets a late hit, and after the late hit, Coming in right from the right there on big Mike Abu Mestrick. He goes down. And then and then Lamar McGriggs got up and, and told them all about the hit. So they got two. And the Renegades get 25 yards out of it. Out to the 50 with a first down there. And Crowley missed his target. Lamar McGriggs was charging. And Aubrey Cummings was the intended receiver. Now you heard Joe Palpau talk about just putting first downs together, which is exact, exactly what Jock Climey said at halftime. Ottawa Renegades so far this season in three games have been pretty good at just getting the ball and the dump passes, getting it to Darren Davis, small short passes over the middle, sort of in the intermediate range. And all of a sudden they've gone away from it, trying to go deep late in that half. And Crowley's numbers will not get the job done. Second and 10. And Nash makes a great play on Cummings. He's had a couple of great moves tonight. 0-0, zero, zero, Harold Nash. You know, sometimes players in certain games just get into a groove, and doesn't matter what position you play, quarterback's most notable. But I think Harold Nash right now is into that groove. He started the game with a big hit on Eddie Brown. That set the tone for his entire team. And he makes another play there. Crowley wanted the penalty, but uh, not, on, not on this one. Roberts is deep along with Marvin. And it's coming down to Marvin Coleman. He's out to the 20, actually stopped at about the 19. First and 10, Winnipeg after a seven yard return. It's been all bombers so far. Kahari Jones, the playmaker, is holding a hot hand tonight. Winnipeg on top, 27 to nothing. And he got a great start. Well, coming into this game in three weeks, you see how he had the slow start and then he progressed. In his 21 to 30 passing attempts, his percentage went up to close to 80%. Now, he's flopped that over, and we'll show you how in just one minute. Kahari Jones has always been a strong finisher. Here's Charles Roberts. You know, and that's not a bad thing that he gets better as the game goes on, and that's what has happened. But tonight, see, he heard some of the critics, and he said, okay, well, I'm going to come out firing him. Throw for 60% in his first 20 throws. Now, after that, he's dropped around. But you got to give Ottawa a little bit of credit. they got to start to figure things out a little bit, and there's only a couple throws in the post-21 attempt. And the three touchdown passes, two of those coming right after turnovers. He's over 200 yards as the second half gets underway. Second and two. Jones won't get away this time. Derek Ford got him. He's the fastest of the Renegades along that front four. Yeah, and he shows it. He shows it because he goes down inside and then he flies out to get containment. That's his responsibility. His first steps were down into the offensive line. Then he recovers and flies out there and cuts Kahari Jones off. And he went out of the game early in the first quarter with a bit of a nick and has come back and shows his speed right there. Out of Arizona State. Cameron is in. Third down in a punting situation. Winnipeg Cameron back on the 13. And Eddie Brown awaits. Charge was on. Cameron got it away. However, they whistled it down. The last Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Time count violation. Winnipeg number six. 
Still for still third down. The last Winnipeg Blue Bomber punt to be blocked. They blocked two against Hamilton here. But the last one to have Bob Cameron was blocked in, back in the year 2000. And it actually wasn't Bob Cameron. It was Troy Westwood was kicking for Cameron, who was injured at the time. That was the last one blocked against Winnipeg. And now Osbaldiston had two blocked by the Bombers, one by Benefield, the other by Yamoka in their last meeting. That's in the regular season. Oh! This one. <laughs> there you go. There it is. And well, the Renegades are on the board. Talk about, talk about jinxing a guy. Whoa. Coming through to block it, John Grace, who's been a nemesis for the Blue Bombers, and Ralph Staten in the end zone to recover. Well, you know, on the play before, the one that was whistled down, the Ottawa Renegades were very close. Staten was there along with Grace, and then this time they reload, and this time you see number seven, John Grace got a free release. Usually Bob Cameron is so good at avoiding the rush. Even when someone gets in clean, he'll kick it underneath him or make a little move to kick it away. That time he didn't see Grace coming at all. So the block by Grace, the touchdown by Staten, and the extra points is good. Renegades close to within 20. Still a long way back, but this is a great way to begin the second half for Ottawa. Back in Winnipeg, Staten and Grace are the two guys that set up Ottawa's first points of the evening. Well, usually when a player makes a play, there's somewhere along the line someone has helped him out, and John Grace makes the block, but without the help of Ralph Staten, who came off the edge and drew a block, John Grace doesn't get there, and I'll, you'll have to stay tuned for one kickoff for me to show you exactly what I'm talking about. A big break for Joe Pow Pow to get a good start. And that's probably what he told his guys at halftime. As win the third quarter, let's start the third quarter in the second half on a positive note and let's take it from there. Canadian football, you can score a lot of points in a short amount of time. Ottawa. Delay of game here charged against the Renegades. And that's the new kicker got into the lineup last week. And Dave Miller Johnson. John Grace, after blocking a punt, he is rewarded by going on to the kickoff cover team. Of course, he plays every down on defense as well. A lot of penalties for the Renegades in this one tonight. 15 for 136 yards. They took 13 for 150 and one last week. Charles Roberts returning for Winnipeg. Out across the 40 to the 45. 29 on the return. Okay, for all of the, all of you who, who stayed patient, I'll now show you what I'm talking about. John Grace is right in here, right? And watch Ralph Staten over here. This is Andre Arlane, the deep back. He's got to step out, and he's got to take the outside threat. Okay, here I was going running. Now watch the step out. There's the step out to Ralph Staten. That takes that block away, and that lets John Grace go free. Andre Arlane was in a bind. He had Staten right in front of him, who recovers the block punt. He had to take him. He showed first, and that left John Gray straight, straight through to the punter. From the 46, first down. Winnipeg and a little bit of a mix-up, it would appear there, in the exchange between Kahari Jones and Charles Roberts. Well, it looked like Charles Roberts got there a little early. And Roberts is slightly shaken up. Because when Kahar Jones went to give him the football, it looked like he got it up in his face mask. See, watch Charles Roberts to the right. He jumps up in there. Now, Kahar Jones had to it, give it to him quickly in a high position. By the time Charles Roberts had gathered it up, he was being hit. So he limps off the field. Most outstanding player in Canadian football last year, Kahari Jones. Well, with number one out of the lineup, you saw Kahari Jones look a little bit further down that wristband. A lot of the plays at the top of the wristband have number one on them. Second and long, and the Renegades will force a quick turnaround here as Stiegel couldn't hang on. That slipped right through his fingers. Coverage by Vernon Mitchell. Here's Stiegel right there. He's going to come across using motion. See how deep he is. He's actually behind Kahari Jones at the snap of the ball. He's trying to hide in there. 
on Vernon Mitchell. Then he comes across and just slips through his hands. I think he was well short of first down territory anyway. And Mitchell is with him step for step. Cameron is in. His last one was blocked and went for a touchdown. They got close, but Cameron got it away. Well, that a ball bounced back. That ball hit the green and sucked right back towards the hole. Didn't it? Uh, it's a Ballada football. It must be the Ballada football. Ready for a little golf tomorrow? I am first round of the British Open. I've never been able to do that, you know? Bring Suck the ball back. back. Yeah. A lot of the guys that you'll see in the yeah, British those, Open, those they guys can in Muirfield do that. will be able to drag it right back. Of course, I, I can't afford the Ballada, Ballada ball anyway because I lose so many and just be too costly. You'll get up bright and early in the East. 6 a.m. and a repeat. Yeah, they'll show it later. to you again later. Yeah. In British Open action. Tiger Woods will tee off at 4 a.m. Eastern time. So you'll catch his first round on the backside on the back nine. Eddie Brown was the receiver there. Yeah, Eddie Brown was the receiver, or but at least the intended receiver. Yeah, but Jimmy Jimmy Oliver was sort of in the line as well, and I think it was actually Jimmy Oliver who distracted Eddie Brown. Two receivers sort of in the same area at that time. You know, and, and the Ottawa Renegades have a, a decent opportunity here to take advantage of some momentum. They got a defensive stop, they've got a block punt for seven points. But now they're looking at second and ten. Crowley on the move to his left, has a target over there, catch is made, it'll be enough for the first down for Denny Montana. Having a real nice season, 11 receptions, 168 yards and a couple of touchdowns coming in. Now this is a good way to get Dan Crowley comfortable again. Roll him out to the left, shorten the field for him. He does a nice job with, with Dave Donaldson bearing down on him of turning his shoulders around and getting square to that throw and putting a nice strike in there. 17-yard gain for the Renegades. Now at the Winnipeg 50. Crowley in a little bit nicer rhythm all of a sudden. And he gets another strike. Jimmy Oliver, 85, made the catch. Yeah, this is back to the original game plan. You see, they're not they're not really going to go away from it too much. You see, Jimmy Oliver will just take a step and then slide right in there to the number 50. That's how they started the game. A lot of plays that look just like that one. Seven-yard gain, second and three. Crowley has some pretty good ideas here, but couldn't connect with Oliver there. That one was into the turf. Yeah, he had to rush it, though, because Brian Clark was there, and he really couldn't turn his shoulders around. Remember I showed you turn the shoulders around on the last play that he completed? Watch how quickly he has to do it now. Turn the shoulder. Whoa, I got to get it out of there. And he kind of short arms it because of it. And that's because Brian Clark was standing right beside him. And that's a difficult thing to do, John, and roll to your left, get those shoulders around, and try and complete that pass. Nice linebacking core here in Winnipeg, without question. Brian Clark. Ryland Wickman in the middle and Lamar McGregs who's made some big plays. Yeah, the three tonight. amigos. They call them the three amigos. Harper's punts. And there'll be no return rolling out near the 12. You know, one of the reasons that Ottawa may be struggling a bit offensively is that one of their weapons, Donnie Ashley, has got the pads off. And he came out like that in the second half and would indicate that he is out of the lineup and we'll try and figure out exactly what happened to Donnie Ashley because he never went down on the field. He's listed as a fifth receiver on their depth chart a lot of the time, but but in reality he gets in and plays yeah, a lot. Yeah, and he started tonight and he's become a, a go-to guy. He's one of the guys that, that you can dump it off to him and he can make something happen with it, not to mention what he can do in gaining you field position in the special teams. So that's a big loss to have Donnie Ashley over there on the sideline. Charles Roberts, room on the right side. Well, and here's good news for Winnipeg fans that number one's back for them. Remember, he limped off in the last series. He was shaking up a little bit. He's. And this is this is Charles Roberts. You see, John Grace tries to take a little bit of a gamble, and he steps up into the one hole, and Roberts shows himself in that hole, and then bounces to the outside, and that's what Charles Roberts did last week against this team. Gerald Vaughn. 
making the stop on Roberts and making this second and two. Roberts will have the first down, spinning for an extra four yards as well. And the safety, Sean Gallant had to come up and make the stop. Well, it's amazing how he can find something when there's really nothing there. And this is why, you know, offensively, Paul Lapolis, who would love to see Mike Sellers touch the ball more, he just has trouble doing it because Charles Roberts, you know, he can break one on any given play. Not that Mike Sellers can't because he's got good speed for a big man, but the potential for Roberts is greater. From the Winnipeg 40, first down. Bombers, and here goes Charles Roberts. Safe to say he will not be caught this time. He had the opportunity on a punt return in the first half and was tracked down from behind by Grayson Schillingford, but a 70-yard touchdown. Close this thing wide open for the Blue Bombers. Simply too many weapons for the Renegades tonight. Well, sometimes it's Charles Roberts making something happen, and sometimes it's the big guys up front opening up some holes. Charles Roberts hit that line of scrimmage and was untouched. Charles Roberts, this 70-yard run, his first rushing touchdown this season. Goodbye. Second touchdown of the evening for Charles Roberts. This is the most spectacular of the two. Well, that was just an all-out sprint. That was more like a track meet for Charles Roberts than it was a football play because he never had he never got hit. Not once. Didn't have to make a guy miss. Didn't have to break a tackle. He just had to sprint. It was like a 70-yard, let's see how quickly we can get there. Turn on the Jets and fly. Grayson Schillingford. Whoa, man. Count the bombers around Schillingford there. Wow. Three of them met at the kick returner. Well, 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 let's take a look at, at the touchdown for Charles Ro or, the, or excuse me, the, the return. Watch this wall. Watch this wall coming. Whoa, man. Capers was there, number 23. Donaldson not far away. Mike Sellers right there. Mike Sutherland right there. Watch Sellers move to his right and then come back down on Michael Barrow. There's the block down. You see the kick out on Kelly Wilshire by Sutherland, and that's why Charles Roberts is sprinting to the end zone. Mike Sellers just completely drove Michael Burrow right down into the center, center area, and then he gets the hug afterwards. David and Goliath. Well, there's a 260-pound blocking fullback, and look where Roberts is amongst the TD leaders all of a sudden. Lawrence Phillips of Montreal leads the way. Bruce, Roberts, and Stiegel right behind they're talking about say hey, you just keep blocking like that and i'll just keep running touchdowns and then i'll buy you dinner and and we're good that's how you draw it up when the when the coaches when the coaches get it this is how they draw it up they say okay mike you walk out here and then you block down right here and then mike sutherland you come out here and you kick out right here that's exactly how they'll draw it and then watch how it's executed Bam on one block, there's the kick out, and there is a huge hole. Well, it has to be perfect blocking when you go 70 yards untouched. <laughs> Absolutely. Without making a move, as you said, he just turned the corner and went. Because there's two players there that can fill that hole, and both were blocked well. Slight delay while the Renegades tended to an injured player. And it happened to be Grayson Schillingford who was shaken up on the return. Far side on first down. Danny Montana can't get away, but he's 
Got most of what is necessary for the first down wrapped up by the veteran Marvin Coleman. Montana again involved in this offense for the Ottawa Renegades, but it's been a way too little so far in three quarters of play. Well, really two and a half quarters. There's Darren Davis. Nice run for him. Grabbed by Lamar McGriggs. Last week, Davis just 17 yards on nine carries. So this running game for the Renegades didn't work last week in spite of the fact that they were able to come away with a win. Just a front seven that last year you can see a little bit of a hole there in a couple of nice blocks at the point of attack this time by Carl Coulter he gets involved Seth Dittman also the tackle those big boys start blocking makes it a little easier on the running backs doesn't it Davis has 17 there Montana has more yards here short of the first down as he was forced out about three shy now Crowley has this team moving a little bit more but it's a little bit late lots of time to go but the lead looks insurmountable already. Well, yeah, but Dan Crowley's really not looking at the lead, and, and he's listening to his head coach who's saying, win the third quarter, and right now in the third quarter, it's 7-all. So, you know, Dan Crowley has been playing very well coming in. That's what he did last week. The two touchdowns, just the one interception. Second and four. Davis again. Penalty markers go down. And we'll see where they spot the ball on this one. Obviously, the penalty may have an impact on the play as well. Well, it, it likely will either way because the flag flew during the play. If it, if it comes after the play and Darren Davis has first down territory. Holding Ottawa 57. That's Val St. Germain playing his 125th CFL game tonight. Well, yeah, and he got, he's got to buckle up on this down now because now it's second in a bunch, about 14. And you know what Winnipeg Blue Bombers up front are thinking? Let's go get him. Doug Brown, Dave Benefield. Watch out because those four are coming along with Inoki Brechterfield. Here they come. Charges on. One-handed by Davis. Well read by the Bombers. And Brian Clark has had a whale of a game tonight. Another tackle there for number 48. I told you that they were going to be coming. Big Doug Brown, 302. And, and he knows it's passing down. Doesn't care what kind of pass. It's not, it's, not, it's not up to him. Watch Big Doug Brown, 97, on a bull rush. Right down the middle. Bam! That's right on Val St. Germain. Jermaine hanging on there. Harper is in on third down Ottawa. Less than four minutes to go, third quarter. Charge was on. Brechterfield couldn't get there. Harlan Bruce. And flags are down on the return. He got just four yards. The punts traveled 70. Welcome back to Winnipeg, Wendy CFL Live. Tomorrow evening, Ticats Lions at BC Place. Join us at 10.30 Eastern. Bombers back on offense. Kahari Jones looking for Arlam Bruce. I said that punt traveled 70. Just a little uh, mix up here trying to read the writing. <laughs> oh, it, was it wasn't a 40 quite yard 70? Punt. Yeah. Okay. A 70 yard punt we might have uh, made a little bigger deal. You know I just want to go back and shoot. We showed you Doug Brown just one make one quick point. That Davis run of 14 yards was the longest run that the Bombers have given up this year and they, they come into this game giving up 46 yards rushing per game so that's why Ottawa and a lot of other teams have been struggling offensively against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They can stop that run in a big way. Second and ten, Bombers at the 48. Kahari Jones got rid of it in a hurry. Here you go, Milt Stiegel. Catch him if you can. They've got a different routine worked out for every celebration of a touchdown here tonight. This bomber receiving court. 
Well, tonight, those pads around the goalpost down there, that one they wrap around that post, it's taking a beating from the Winnipeg receivers, running backs, because they're putting a bunch on the board tonight. 62 yards. And you knew he was gone. Milt Stiegel has another touchdown tonight. Sixty two yards for Milt Stiegel. Kahari Jones knew he had one on ones because he had two linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. There's one Kelly Wiltshire. Here's the other one Dave Thomas. He knows he's got blitz coming. Now Kelly Wiltshire will slide in the middle but that's not a factor for him. Dave Thomas blitzes. He's got one on one in the secondary and Milt Stiegel got around Gerald Vaughn. Gerald Vaughn's game as a defensive back is to use his hands. If you can slip him, Milt Stiegel got behind him. Now it's just whether or not he can run onto that football and Stiegel does it. Fourth touchdown of the season for Stiegel. Celebrate. He didn't celebrate. He just, oh yeah, another day at the office. And then Mike Sellers came on. You could smile at least. I make it 41 to 7 now. Kahari has been hot. Over 250 yards passing tonight. Stiegel has a couple of big ones, including that 62-yarder for the touchdown. 59-yarder in the opening quarter really set the Bombers en route to a solid offensive evening. Right after the 59-yard catch, Kahari Jones hit Arlen Bruce the third for a 23-yard touchdown. So Paul LaPolice and the Bomber offensive unit have had well, you know what a he's very done? successful night. And now he's smiling too and, and good on him because you know what he's done? He, he's made some nice adjustments on the fly. Ottawa had a pretty good game plan defensively to try and take Charles Roberts out of it and Paul LaPolice ad adapted to that. What he did is he went to Stiegel a couple times. Then when they started to go over there and cover Stiegel a little bit, he went back to Charles Roberts. Nice to have all those weapons. Bobbled by Eddie Brown, and he's out at about the 26. Well, that's a horrible number along the top line here, if you look at this. That's a James Bond. 007 for the Renegades. My name is Bond. James, James Bond. Bond. No, that's, that's not... Uh, yeah, but you know what? Credit to Winnipeg, and that's what you do because they were ready to play this game. Their their pride was was hurt last week. Very good effort from Ottawa. Yeah, and these renegades have been shaken, not stirred tonight. <laughs> I hear you. I smell what you're cooking. That's a lateral. Live ball. Sure is. Harold Nash couldn't get to it before it went out of bounds. All they had to do was touch it. Touch it last. That's a live ball because that's behind the line of scrimmage. Cummings and, and behind the quarterback. Cummings might have forced it out with the last effort that he had at the ball. The pass was intended for him. So second and way too much here for the Renegades. Back at the 19. Here comes Blitz. Donaldson was on the way. Cummings couldn't bring that one in. A lot of guys up on the line. Lamar McGriggs, the only guy that's going to drop out. Number 36, he's right there. But everybody else on the line is going to blitz. See, here they come. Crowley feels like the pressure's coming, so he dumps it off there. Lamar McGriggs had dropped into coverage. And Kahari Jones gets another crack at the football in what will be good field goal position now. Or, or field position, I should say. What Joe's worried about here is that Kahari Jones, right now, with 41 on the board, is on pace to throw 58 touchdown passes this season. Harper's punt is not deep. 
Renegades looking to get away, but here's Roberts again. Harper squared him up there and waited for him, and now Harper is shaken up. He's the punter. This is more of what we would have expected from the Blue Bombers last week. 35-yard punt and a return of 31 here for number one, Charles Roberts. That's why, remember Mike Villamick earlier tackling him on that bounce around? That's why you tackle him. Go yard. Scoop it up. Ottawa 56, penalties decline, major foul, unnecessary roughness, Winnipeg number four after the play, first down. Sarlin Bruce the third with the unnecessary roughness penalty called against him. Rough Riders, a grand and glorious franchise in Canadian football, a franchise story. The story of the 1999 season. We'll set up Wendy's Friday Night Football with the Eskimos in town against Saskatchewan. Edmonton 3-0, Saskatchewan 2-1. Could be an interesting game. Well, with regards to their records from 99, so now it'll be like a before and after pitcher. Pretty well. So you'll see what happened in 99 and yeah. the good things that have happened in 2002 as Charles Roberts is wrapped up by Gerald Vaughn. John, Kahari Jones, four touchdown passes tonight. On pace for 58, the record in the Canadian Football League is 48. That was set by Doug Flutie back in 94 when he was in Calgary. So that's quite a pace for Gahari Jones. Now it is very, very early. Jones put up decent numbers last week, 22 of 33 for 277, but he didn't get the job done in a one-point loss to Ottawa. And here he goes with another home run toss. Yes! Arlen Bruce the third has a couple tonight. 23-yarder in the first quarter. And this one, double that. Dave Ritchie's not letting up at all. Well, you know what? Kahari Jones is not letting up at all. He's going to quiet well, down the critics. Well, first of all, rather Kahari, quickly here. That, that will likely be, you know, that's number five for Kahari Jones. Touchdown passes, and that'll likely be his last throw in the evening. But you know one thing? Dave Ritchie's going to run it up if he can, and he is. Forty six yard touchdown to Arlen Bruce. Kahari Jones has five on the night. Arlen Bruce has two of those. Second time Kahari Jones has thrown five touchdown passes this season in one game. Now the margin of victory at 46 points. The largest margin of victory for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers was back in 1986, 56 nothing against the team that I played for in Saskatchewan. I remember it. Yeah, you were back there all night long? Yeah, it was a long night. Who was the quarterback of record when we returned? <laughs> Touchdown passes for Gahari Jones for the second time this season. Returning for the Renegades to begin the fourth quarter. Fumble. Brown lost the ball. Chance for more bomber points here. No, they're saying Ottawa got Ottawa it. Ottawa got it back. They certainly did. Gentlemen, I know three of you back there <laughs> know a little bit about being on both sides of this kind of thing. For me, it was back in 86, right here in Winnipeg. And you asked me who the quarterback well, was. Well, I did. You gave up 56 points that night, and you couldn't remember the quarterback who threw about six over your ears. Well, I thought at first it might be Matt Dunnigan, but it was actually Tom Clements for half the game. Then they felt a little mercy, so Huffnagel came in. Oh, they a said in the more. old guy. John Huffnagel. Yeah. I, I know you guys back there have been on both ends of this. Uh, it's just amazing, Glenn, you know, to see the Bombers, you know, respond this way. It's like the Renegades woke up a sleeping giant last week. Yeah, you are absolutely right, Matthew. From the 27, Ottawa first down, new quarterback is in. To the far side, Montana makes the catch. 
O.T. Sampson gets a shot at it now. Crowley couldn't get the job done. Hey, Jock, if, you're, if your quarterback has put that kind of yardage up there, you've had a pretty good night, probably all the receiving core. Boy, it's nights like this that makes me want to be back out there in the football field. It feels like, it feels like you're going to be open no matter what you do as a receiver. Those guys are just flying by Ottawa's DB. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they're not sitting back and forcing for Harry to throw on their knee. They're getting beat in behind deep. Yes, but Jack, you were closer to being a renegade than a blue bomber <laughs> this season. Yeah, well, I, I said it before, Dave Ricky never did like oh. receivers all that much. Oh, Marvin Coleman almost had the chance to go for six more. The pass was intended for Denny Montana, and Odeman Sampson couldn't get it there. Chris, I got to ask you, though, early in this game, the intimidation factor. You played up there in the trenches, and, and the Bombers came out hitting, didn't they? Well, I'll tell you what. That first play of the second half, did you see how Harold Nash just took the playoff yeah. to take a shot at Mike Arbometric? You don't think for one minute that Joe Popow is going to remember that? Did you see the expression on his face? He'll file that back. He'll remember that. And I get, I tell you, the next time these two teams play, he's going to open his team meeting with that play. It's a good point. Charles Roberts wrapped up at the 42. This is game one of week four, Montreal. And Calgary tomorrow night. Owls go in unbeaten. Stampeders looking for their first win. And we'll have Hamilton at BC also tomorrow evening, 10.30 Eastern time. And to wrap it all up, Wendy's Friday Night Football, Eskimos 3-0, Saskatchewan 2-1. That might be the most interesting game now of what's left well, this week. But before, you know, when we get to that Hamilton-BC game tomorrow, I was going to ask Chris Schultz about the kicking thing, the Matt Kellett, but I, I understand how he is with those guys. Oh, I love him. So maybe I'll defer, should I defer that to somebody else? Yes. <laughs> but I love what Steve Barato do, is doing. He's giving him one more crack because we've all had those kind of games. Exactly right. I think he's doing a great job. You know, they brought in Ian Hewitt, who is doing the tour, as uh, most kickers have to do in this league. He's paying his dues, and I thought he might get a shot, but I think they're showing a classy move here by allowing Kellett to try one more game. You know, he was 5-for-5 five five going into that football game. Hey, give Glenn, I, I agree with Chalk. I do. I mean, it's the right thing to do to give the guy the chance, and I think BC is going to respond. Don't forget Willie Hurst, that running back. 16 carries, 164 yeah. yards. He's for real. Yeah, good point. Looked really good. They had over 200 yards rushing against uh, the Toronto Argonauts in that loss. Mike Sellers picked up nine. This is second and one, and Sellers will take it the rest of the way for a Winnipeg first down. Well, John Grace, guys, had a bit of a target on him throughout this game. Here he is right here. You know coming in from last week that he was kind of a wanted man. He gets over there and gets in on the tackle to Mike Sellers. Bomber drive continues with a first down just outside the Renegade 50. They get the 51 yard line. Kahari Jones still at the controls. Here's Charles Roberts. Looked to be stopped and still grabbed close to four yards there. What's the game of the week for you, Matthew? Oh, well, I think we're watching it right here. I think the anticipation with the war of words going on prior to this one starting. I think that was the game of the week, but you know, we're, we're looking ahead. Uh, but I, what I see here, Wellesley, is, is two coordinators, Dave Easley and Paul Police. you know, and when you play back-to-back -back games like this, they become such an integral part to scheming one another, and it's interesting how this played out. It really looks like the bomber offense, obviously, has gotten the upper hand here. And Paul Police has done a fine job of trying to spread things out, not afraid to go to his wide receivers, and then come back to uh, Bruce and Stiegel in the middle. He's just been wearing out the Renegades defense, and this is a good learning experience for that, uh, for that Dave Easley defense. Jock, Friday night football, buddy. Saskatchewan, what do you think? Well, you know, I've been, I've been looking forward to watching Saskatchewan. I've been looking forward to them having a legitimate football team. I feel so bad for those fans out there. I mean, you guys know what it's like in Regina. There yeah. is no place you would rather be as a player if what you want is people who care. And they care in that city, and unfortunately, they haven't had a winning team. I think this football team's for real. I think they proved that last time they played Montreal, and this is going to be a fun one to watch. Eskimos roll in there with a perfect record. Riders will host. As Grace heads to the sidelines here, we'll take a quick timeout on Wendy's CFL Live. 
Well, almost a reverse of six nights ago. Crowley had the hot hand at least for part of the evening, and the problem was for Kahari Jones trying to complete a few more passes, and he threw up three interceptions. Well, he's come out on fire. He has played a brilliant game here tonight. He has called the plays and delivered the ball. Does so again, just like that. Milt Stiegel. One more for Milt. You know, and, and some may wonder why Kahari Jones is, is still in the game. Six touchdown passes now in one game for Kahari. Now there is a flag on the field. Uh, they'll call this one back offside. That would have been a 47-yard touchdown for Milt Stiegel, and they're bringing it all the way back. Bombers offside. Well, Milt, Milt Stiegel was about to start to make Bomber history as he, or excuse me, Kahari Jones was, as he hits Milt Stiegel across the middle because there was a bunch of quarterbacks for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers that have thrown five touchdown passes, including Matt Dunnigan, who did it three times as a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, but only Jack Jacobs has thrown six, and only Jim Van Pelt has thrown seven. That's the top number. Kahari still has a chance, however, and he has Stiegel there. No touchdown, but a first down inside the 40. Now the question is at, at 48-7 with 10 minutes to go, why is Kahari Jones still in the game? And you wonder how much this goes into the talk that's happened all week and it's sort of like, you know what? We're just going to keep going and we're just going to keep scoring until you stop us. Well, I think Kahari has something to say about this, do you not? He is the number one quarterback in Winnipeg. Sellers, we'll see where they spot this one. Put up a pretty good head of steam. Comes down around the 30-yard line. Well, this so we'll is look for this the spot. Is, sorry, John. This is one of the toughest times for the Ottawa defense. For any defender who is on the wrong end of a score like this, now it's time that you have to reach down way, way down. Because it's pretty easy at this point to fold your tent and go, let's just go and regroup for next week. But you still got about 10 minutes to go. And you got to battle and you got to compete because every play is on the tape upstairs and will be watched by the coaching staff tomorrow. The Sellers got eight. This is second and two. And Charles Roberts takes up. Flag is down as Roberts gets down to the one yard line. And this one's coming back. Holding. Winnipeg number 64. That's big Mo. Mo Elowanibi. Left tackle, he's right up here. You be the ref. The chance to look at the second play. Well, he gets the arms on the outside and turn. Yeah, well, that's holding. Keaton Cromarty. Keaton Cromarty was basically tackled, so. Dave Ritchie can complain all he wants about that one, but when he looks at it on the tape, I'm sure he will agree that that was holding. Second down and 12. Kahari goes for six more. Two receivers, two defenders in the area. No flags are down. Well, the fans are having fun. They wanted a pass interference call on the play getting involved here. They're loving to see his, their team respond like they have after the loss. Bombs away again for Kahari Jones. Now, in fairness to Kahari Jones, who's still in the game, it's in a bit of a surprise. That's what the Ottawa defense is giving him because they're blitzing him. They're sending everybody with no safety in the middle. So that's, that's where the progression has to take you. That's where the play takes you. So this that type of play right there is not a situation of being greedy or trying to rub their nose in it. That's where you throw the ball. Westwood, a 47-yard attempt. He's got this one. And the Bombers are over 50. A night of revenge here in Winnipeg.
The ladies have had lots to cheer about for the Blue Bombers here tonight. Tomorrow, Wendy CFL Live, Tie Cats, Lions, the Battle of the Cats at BC Place. Oh, uh, yeah, the ladies will be spent tonight. They're going to be soaking their feet as well. It's been a long night for them. All the cheering and the pom poms and everything else. Bombers back with a vengeance and in absolute control of this game from the opening quarter. And now we do see backup quarterbacks. Ottoman Sampson has been in for a couple of series and he airs this one out. Almost a great play. Montana with wonderful speed got in behind Marvin Coleman. Couldn't quite make the catch. Tough night for Dan Crowley, but it's really not a loss that will be on just his shoulders. The turnovers were not his fault. The interception was tipped at the line. It was a fumble by Darren Davis, turned into 14 points, and then this really this snowball effect began, and it hasn't stopped. It's now an avalanche. On a steamy night in Winnipeg. A cool reception for the Ottawa Renegades. A whistle down, nowhere to go for Adam and Sampson. And as that wise old veteran said earlier this evening, you Time don't want to wake a sleeping Ottawa giant. 16. And that was Matt Dunnigan who suggested that. The Bombers went into Ottawa last week, turned it over six times, and lost the ball game. Now the pride factor kicks in for the Renegades, especially for a guy like Joe Pow Pow, who's been at both ends of these scores, both as a player and as a coach, but Pride Factor kicks in. All he wants to see now is his, his players compete to the very end. Sampson had no one home there. Cummings was in the area. So was Grayson Schillingford. And O.T. Sampson couldn't find either. The Renegades had a few avenues to build this team 24 free agents and some key ones that that will be guys will be impact players darren davis and guys like that expansion draft they picked up 12 a lot of good canadians in that expansion draft including kelly wilshire and carl coulter their big center and you get guys like that that's your character guys so ottawa has a lot of football left in them and, and they'll be around and they're going to be around all season long and, and i think they'll compete for a playoff spot Harper not deep with this punt, but there will be no return. Decent bounce for the Renegades there. There's the score of the Bombers are back and rolling in Winnipeg tonight. Kahari Jones is going to take a bit of a rest here into the final seven minutes and 34 seconds in Winnipeg. His work is done. That means Pat Barnes will get an opportunity to direct this Blue Bomber offense. Barnes set up at the Winnipeg 50, and there's his first pass looking deep. And Ralph Staten was covering on Arlen Bruce the third. Barnes over from the Calgary Stampeders in an offseason trade. And he hasn't seen much activity. Well, he has. He had a real good preseason and, and a good training camp. And Brendan Tamman here in Winnipeg said, we really feel like we got two that can play. Kahari's our man, but we got another guy sitting there that can play. And they're really high on Pat Barnes. And you know what this does? It does three things for the Bombers. One, it protects your starting quarterback, Kahari Jones. Number two, the game's in hand. Give Pat Barnes a chance to get some real snaps in live action. Number three, if Dave Ritchie still wants to run up the score, if he does, I'm not saying he is, if he does, then he can get away with it with a backup quarterback because he's got to run the offense. Well, Pat Barnes definitely wants to run up the score. While he's on the field, completing there to Milt Stiegel, he wants to show a little something out there, so he'd like to get to the end zone a time or two. Well, let's just take a look at Pat Barnes. Steps up in that pocket, looks calm and controlled, steps nicely into that throwing lane, and then strong arms it there to Milt Stiegel, who had to go down and make a pretty nice catch. 19-yard gain, Barnes to Stiegel, and the Blue Bombers are inside the Renegades' 40. Mike Sellers seeing a little more of the football tonight, just 
Six rushes coming in. For 11 yards, Kahari Jones, 324 and five touchdowns. And I'll just make a note of that. I've got 324 yards and five touchdowns. Okay, good, good. That's good. I'll send that into the league. Oh, he was checking out the fact book there to say tied Matt Dunnigan. He did. Not for the Blue Bomber record. That is held by a couple of veterans older than Matthew. Stiegel was the intended receiver. 540 on the clock now. So Barnes heads to the sidelines. Here's the game story. Kahari Jones got a touchdown in the first quarter and then fired four more touchdown passes to lead the league with 14 this season. Well, yeah, I mean, Milt Stiegel was involved early and then again late. Charles Roberts was involved sort of in the middle, but together, wow. Stiegel scored one and set up one. He also had one called back. That's right. Troy Westwood is wide, so he's missed a couple tonight. And that from 42 yards. Not a happy kicker as he heads to the sidelines. Back to Winnipeg, Wendy's CFL Live. And a crunch from Harold Nash. He's had a couple of big hits. That one on Grayson Schillingford on the pass from O.T. Sampson. Yeah, I think Harold Nash sort of the unsung hero in this game because we saw the flashy numbers by Kahari Jones, the big plays by Stiegel and Charles Roberts, but the grunt plays that set the tone early came from Harold Nash. Big hit, and Eddie Brown set the tone, had a key knockdown on a second down play early in the second half, and he's, re he's really come to play tonight as well. Second and five. Sampson buys a little time. Schillingford makes the catch, but he'll be stopped short of the first down. The Bomber defense has done a great job. Just about every series tonight, only one Renegades touchdown has been allowed. And Dave Ritchie definitely has his defending Eastern Conference champions back on track as he tries to win the West this year. They weren't off track for long, were they? Gene Gaines on the right. Takes care of the secondary, and he had them ready because you saw Harold Nash performing, and on the left is Paul Lapolis, who did the exact same thing with Kahari Jones. Third down, the Renegades decide to go for it. Montana couldn't make the catch. So they'll turn it over to the Bombers again. O.T. Sampson, Odeman Sampson. Well, Winnipeg, A little distress there. Winnipeg now will head over and travel to Toronto to play and they and they have a tough schedule coming up when you look at Winnipeg because they got to do that four game thing or four nights thing Toronto and then Montreal with just four nights of rest so now it's their turn so this was important for a couple reasons they wanted payback on Ottawa needed to get back on track don't want to lose two in a row but you've got that short week thing coming up and the Eastern swing Barnes hands off to Roberts. Roberts around the corner. And boy, he's quick. There's a penalty marker down. Charles Roberts. Something that the Winnipeg Blue Bomber fans can really get excited about. This is a guy that, you know, he's, he's one of those edge of your seat guys. You know, when you're sitting in the stands or you're sitting at home, like, like most of Manitoba Major was tonight. Foul, unnecessary roughness. Winnipeg 68. First down. Most of Manitoba because they lifted the blackout tonight. Yeah. And what a show they got, did they? Hello, Flynn Flon and Dauphin and Yeah, and, and you know fall. what? And this and, and this guy, Charles Roberts, is is the edge of your seat guy where every time it touches the ball, you just slide to the edge of your seat. Bomber's next home game against the Lions, but they've got a couple on the road before they come home for that. Interesting thing about Charles Roberts, I mean, he has a 70-yard touchdown run tonight. But in two years in the CFL, he has really become quite famous. Here's Stoddard making the catch, and he's hammered by Staten after doing it. People, meaning 
player personnel people in the Canadian Football League say this guy could be our Charles Roberts and this guy's only been around for right. a season and a couple of games. I mean, You're right. They're already talking about the style of play that this guy has. He's a trendsetter. Bombers rolling on to victory here tonight. There's still more to come, however, from Winnipeg. Hit of the night came early. Harold Nash has had quite an evening in this bomber romp. That set the tone for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers tonight. Less than three minutes to go. A long night for the Renegades. In their first appearance in Winnipeg. Wade Miller got a chance to slide into the backfield there and carries for a little bit. Well, when Wade Miller is getting a running play, you either have a huge lead or you're behind by a whole bunch. And for the Bombers, it's the huge lead, and all you have to do is look at that bottom line. 20 in the second. For the first time this year, they scored in the first quarter, touchdown. We talked about that, the Bombers needing a better start. They got it. Last year's MVP came to play, didn't he? No one home for Pat Barnes. Well, let's give the game ball out tonight. Set to go? Yeah. I think I think there's no question who gets this one. Brought to you by Sport Check, Canada's choice for sports. Kahari Jones, five touchdown passes. And you know, you can say he answered the critics in one way, but I don't think anyone was too critical of the, no. the play of Kahari Jones. Not really. There just were three start. interceptions last week. One was tipped. And it was one of those nights. No, I, no one was, no one was asking for a quarterback change or any kind of no, controversy no, 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 no. here he, by any means. He is the man, and he is a terrific player, and unquestionably the most outstanding in the CFL last season. But you know, when people get optimistic about a football team, they expect something just about every time out. They got it tonight. It started with a bunch of turnovers. This, Lamar McGriggs, that was the one that was tipped at the line, and Kahari Jones made quick work of that turnover, turning it into seven points to Charles Roberts. Darren Davis took his turn with the turnover. That was when he put it on the ground there. Danny Montana, his own player. Kahari Jones fired touchdowns. Right after those turnovers, the very next play, the Bombers were into the end zone. It was 14 quick points, and it was good night, Renegades, right about there. And this is the touchdown that you're talking about, and it was a perfect pass to the corner of the end zone to Marcus Howell. And he was on. He was in the zone, however you want to say it. Kahari Jones was ready to go. So a couple of touchdowns for Charles Roberts tonight. 17 points off turnovers. And, you know, when you look at the rest of this week, Friday night football, Edmonton's in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan can find a way to win that one. Kind of a log jam, log jam atop the West Division. If Saskatchewan can beat the Eskimos Friday night, there would be a three-way tie for top spot in the West at three and one. Now, that's a tall order to win. But the Riders playing well, and they're on home turf. And, and against a very good Edmonton Eskimo team, certainly not ruling them out because they are finding ways to win. Can Calgary win for the first time this year with the Alouettes in town? That's tomorrow night. Wendy CFL Live, Ty Cats Lions. Must win for BC there. In a cat fight at BC Place. Whoa! Harper sails this one. Arlen Bruce stopped at the 35. Kahari Jones resting on the sidelines after throwing five touchdown passes. He is the biggest part of this game story for the Blue Bombers, but when you look at it, it was an all-round effort tonight. So if Kahari Jones is the gun, then Arlen Bruce is Bullet one, Milt Stegall bullet two, Charles Roberts bullet three. That's half the gun. 
Yeah, and only five touchdown tosses. He's one short of a six shooter there, right? <laughs> well, he had the other one. They just called it back. They called it back on Stiegel. Hotel. After I've done some things up. Here. There you go. So running at the time here, Pat Barnes at the controls for the Blue Bombers in a very comfortable 55 to 7 victory. Matt, I don't imagine you're too surprised at the Bombers playing well tonight, but maybe at the dominance in this game. Thought we had the panel all hooked up there. Sorry, Wellesley, what'd you say? I just say you're likely not too surprised that the Bombers are walking away with this, but they really have dominated, and the score is uh, quite different from last week. Yeah, it's, it's almost to the point where, he's, you know, he's question when are they going to pull Kahari out and put the uh, Barnes in here to get him from PT like we're seeing now, but uh, they certainly put it away early and uh, showed their dominance, flexed their muscles, and uh, turned some heads throughout the league, I'm sure, with this performance tonight. And... and Chris, I guess if you're if you're the Ottawa Renegades right now, you've got about a minute 28 to try and hit somebody. Well, yeah, because that's what you because that's what you feel like doing, don't you? You know what? I, there's a couple of things I found really interesting. First, right there, Joe Pow Pow. He's going to take this game on a personal level because a lot of big plays against his defensive football team, his quarterback didn't play good, and Winnipeg was overtly aggressive in this game. He'll file that. And he's going to use that to the team's advantage, not only in this game when these two teams meet again, whether it be the playoffs for the next year, but the next game that the Renegades play. I don't think they'll be caught off guard the next game. Eddie Brown has taken some hits tonight. He's back returning kicks now. And there were blue bombers all around. He wisely went down. Well, you know, maybe Jock can give us a little insight on that because the next game for Ottawa, Jock, is Hamilton traveling to the nation's capital. And this is the toughest week, isn't it? I've been there. You've been there. You have to go all week thinking about this game right here. Well, you know, everyone's talking about the fact that this team has been competitive in every football game. Now, all of a sudden, they can't say that anymore. And film session this week is going to be very interesting to see how Coach Pow Pow and the rest of his staff deals with it. They can either rip their players uh, if it's a lack of effort, if it's blown assignments, which there, sh which there surely was tonight, or they can he can say to them, look, we're a young football team. We need to simply maintain our confidence and go in. And if we beat Hamilton next week, this game is completely forgotten. And I think Joe Pow Pow is the type of guy who's not going to be too hard on his players. I think he's going to try to encourage them. He's going to look for the positives if he can find them in this football game, but but definitely correct the negatives. You know, I, I, there are lots of there are lots of blown defensive coverages tonight. No, I, I would agree with you 100. percent I think you know, at times that I've been in this kind of situation, like back in 1986 when Winnipeg handed us a 56 nothing pounding. I think at that point our coach took the game film and just said, guys, you know what? <laughs> Let's just file this one under G for garbage. And no move. wonder you forgot who was quarterbacking <laughs> against you. <laughs> and move right along because, you know, you do look for the positives. But And I know Joe, as well as I know him as, as a coach and as a person, he's not going to be too negative anyway. He's going to go in there and say, guys, all you have to do is look in the mirror. I don't have to say a word. Mm -hmm. Now the Bombers... Have a tough week heading east. First against the Argonauts, followed by a date with Montreal. So that's the tough stretch for the Blue Bombers. Obviously important that they come off this one tonight in rather convincing fashion heading to Toronto and Montreal. Well, this is the great confidence builder. They go into a Toronto team that's reeling a little bit after a loss to the Edmonton Eskimos. Well, they've certainly got some practice, Glenn, on uh, handling cover zero tonight because the Ottawa team's been trying to pressure Winnipeg all night, and seems like I know they'll get some of that against Toronto. Yeah, Gary Etcheberry likes to put them all up on the line, doesn't he? Time ticking down. It's been over for the Renegades for some time. Blue Bombers have been solid in all phases of the game tonight. Matt, 
Tell me how Kahari Jones feeling right now. You, for a win as a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, you did this a bunch, five touchdown passes. Yeah, he's feeling pretty good about himself right now. You knew he was uh, coming off an uh, MVP performance last year that he was going to respond. He responded positively. He's looking forward to a good night at the Palomino, I can tell you. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> hey, we've got six seconds to go, Matt. Who dropped the one that could have given you six? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I just underthrew a guy pull more than likely, Wellesley. <laughs> if we're going deep, you can guarantee that. <laughs> I would know you would be going deep. Well, full marks to the Bombers. 55-7. Wow. Well, that answers just about every question that was raised in the media in Winnipeg in the last five days. The Blue Bombers are definitely for real and uh, no problems here at all tonight. Yeah, and no problems really for the Ottawa Renegades. This one snowballed on them, but they will be back. They have a competitive football team and a, maybe a more competitive head coach. That is game one of week four in the CFL. Lots more ahead on to BC and then on to Taylor Field. But there's the final here on Wendy's CFL Live in Winnipeg tonight.